In the world of fashion, the era of the 70s and 80s ushered in supermodels that weren't just walking the runway, but changing culture with their beauty, charisma, and iconic attitudes. In this video, we have compiled a list of the beauties that stunned the covers of magazines in the 70s and 80s. To begin with, the legendary Lauren Hutton became the first model to sign a million-dollar contract in 1973. Lauren was born on November 17, 1943, in Charleston, South Carolina, USA, to conservative parents. After the war in 1945, her mother divorced her father and moved to Miami and then Tampa. Unfortunately for Lauren, the remainder of her childhood was marked with an absent father who died in 1956. She expressed her grief of this fact in 1996, saying, Never meeting my father was the most painful thing in my life. I look just like him and I'm named for him. But all I have are these two books of his letters and drawings from the war. The day of my birth he wrote and told me about our ancestors, what he thought was important in the world, what books I should read, and what he wanted for me. Lauren made her first appearance on TV as a decoy contestant on To Tell the Truth in 1963, at the same time working as a bunny waitress at the Playboy Club. In the mid-60s, Lauren returned to New York by herself and started her career as a model. In her early career, she was advised by agents to hide her gap tooth, which was then seen as an imperfection. Initially, Lauren followed this advice by using mortician's wax and later a cap. Eventually, she ditched this method and embraced her gap, which worked out well for her as it gave her a more everyday appeal and girl-next-door allure. All this compounded in her signing a contract of 250,000 US dollars, which is 1.65 million US dollars in 2022, with Revlon in 1973, one of the biggest contracts in modeling history. The contract was to last 10 years and Lauren was to represent the brand Ultima 2. She signed another 20 years later in 1993 as the spokeswoman for the brand, Results. This contract secured her status in the modeling industry, garnering her multiple works, which included her appearing on the front cover of Vogue 26 times. Moving on to the influential Beverly Johnson, the first black model to appear on the cover of American Vogue. Born on October 13, 1952, to a surgical technician, Beverly was raised in a middle-class family in New York. She spent the majority of her youth as a champion swimmer, with the aspiration of being a lawyer. Whilst in college at Northeastern University, Johnson ventured into modeling. She quickly got a role with Glamour. This was a first in many wins, and she went on to appear in more than 500 magazine covers, including the August 1974 issue of Vogue. This historical moment changed the modeling landscape, unlocking more opportunities for African-American models as major designers were more willing to employ them as models. Beverly did not restrict her career to modeling, as she took on roles in films like Ashanti, The Meteor Man, Def Jam's How to Be a Player, and Crossroads. She also appeared in guest roles in TV series like Martin Law and Order, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, The Parenthood, and the Super Bowl episode of Third Rock from the Sun. She also served as a celebrity judge in She's Got the Look, for two seasons where she revealed her struggles with anorexia and bulimia. In 2022, Beverly received the Women's Entrepreneurship Day Organization's Model Pioneer Award at the United Nations. Next, we have Iman, a Somali-American, a muse of designers like Gianni Versace, Thierry Mugler, Calvin Klein, Donna Karan, and Yves Saint Laurent. Iman was born on the 25th of July, 1955, to a diplomat father who was also the Somali ambassador in Saudi Arabia and a gynecologist mother. Following the unrest in Somalia, her family moved back to their country before leaving and settling in Kenya. Whilst at university in Kenya, Iman was discovered by American photographer Peter Beard. Endowed with features like a long neck, slender figure, fine features, and copper-toned skin, Iman became an instant hit with many designers in the modeling industry. 
Yves Saint Laurent described her as his dream woman. She worked with photographers like Helmut Newton, Richard Avedon, Irving Penn and Annie Leibovitz. Aside from being a celebrated model, Iman also started her own cosmetics firm in 1994. She ensured her foundations had inclusive shades, citing her struggles, finding makeup that suited her skin as a motivation. Iman has also been very active in philanthropic work. She has been a global advocate for the Cooperative for Assistance and Relief Everywhere program, CARE, since 2019. She's also a spokesperson for the Keep a Child Alive program. The next model was dubbed The Girl of the 70s by Yves Saint Laurent. Marissa Berenson was born on February 15, 1947. Her father was an American career diplomat turned shipping executive, and her mother was a socialite of Italian, Swiss, French, and Egyptian ancestry. Being the granddaughter of Elsa Schiaparelli, it is no surprise that Marisa ended up succeeding in the fashion industry. Marisa was discovered as a teenager by Vogue and rose to prominence in the 60s. She appeared in the July 1970 issue of Vogue and was also featured on the cover of Time in December 1975. Well known for her frequent visits to nightclubs and other party scenes, Marissa was proclaimed as the queen of the scene. Her success did not end in her youth, as she has an extensive list of filmography with the latest being in 2019. She is currently the chairman of the Board of Culture Project, an organization that sponsors the theater. The next model on our list is the elegant Marpessa Henning, who did not let a rejection from the Eileen Ford Agency deter her from bringing her childhood dream to fruition. Born June 12, 1964, to a Dutch mother and a Dutch father of African ancestry, Mapessa expressed an interest in fashion from the age of four. Her modeling career started at 16, having been discovered by a magazine editor in Amsterdam. Throughout her career, Mapessa featured in international editions of Vogue, Elle, Glamour, Time, Vanity Fair, and Marie Claire, amongst others. Due to the recommendation of fashion illustrator Antonio Lopez, Marpessa was able to work with Azadine Alaya and Karl Lagerfeld. She walked the runway for Dolce & Gabbana's first show in 1985, and many others followed including, but not limited to, Versace, Christian Lacroix, Valentino, Christian Dior, Calvin Klein, Trussardi, and Rifat Uzbek. She also featured in the music video of Slave to Love, a song by Brian Ferry. After her retirement, she moved to Ibiza, Spain, and started a career in interior decor. She came out of retirement in 2004 to close the winter show for designer Antonio Maras. She walked in a special fashion show held by Alberta Ferretti in Florence, Italy in January 2011 and a Fashion for Relief benefit show in Cannes, France in May of the same year. By 2012, she was picked as the global ambassador for Alta Moda, a clothing line of Dolce & Gabbana. For fans of the show America's Next Top Model, our next supermodel is not unfamiliar. Janice Dickinson was born on February 16, 1955, in Brooklyn, New York. Her childhood was plagued with abuse, as she has been vocal about how her father sexually abused one of her sisters, outlining how she herself suffered intense physical and verbal abuse. After winning Miss High Fashion Model, a national competition, she moved to New York City in the 70s to pursue a modeling career. Unfortunately, she faced a lot of rejection because, in the words of Eileen Ford, she was too ethnic. Janice persisted in her job search and was eventually discovered by Jacques Silberstein, a fashion photographer after his girlfriend Lorraine Bracco complimented Janice. Eventually Janice moved to Paris, France, where her exotic appearance secured her a spot in the European fashion industry. She eventually retired to New York in 1978 and worked for several years, earning $2,000 per day, nearly four times the standard rate. She eventually signed a major contract with Ford Models to land an ad campaign for a new JVC camera. She then left Ford Models 
to elite model management, started by John Casablanca. By the 80s, Janice had already achieved recognition and cemented herself as a legend in the industry. She had appeared on the covers of major magazines including Harper's Bazaar, Cosmopolitan, Photo, Marie Claire, and Playboy. She had also worked with big names in fashion like Bill Blass, Gianni Versace, Valentino Garavani, Azadine Alaya, Pino Lancetti, Halston, Oscar de la Renta, and Calvin Klein. Janice has appeared on the covers of international editions of Vogue 37 times. She has also been on the cover of Elle seven times in a row and headlines numerous campaigns for brands like Revlon, Christian Dior, Hush Puppies, Orbit Gum, Balmain and Cutex. Janice managed to retain relevance in the industry by becoming a fashion photographer as she grew older and eventually launching a jewellery brand on HSN in 2008. Paulina Poriskova is an iconic model whose $6 million contract with Estee Lauder solidified her position in the industry. She was born on the 9th of April 1965 to anti-Soviet dissident parents in Czechoslovakia. After Czechoslovakian authorities refused her parents taking her in, there was an ensuing battle that was heavily publicized by the Swedish press. After finally being reunited with her parents in 1973, they had a divorce following her father's affair. Paulina got the attention of John Casablancas, a famed modeling scout after her friend, an aspiring makeup artist painted her face and sent photographs to modeling agencies in Paris. Paulina rose to prominence in Paris and her fame spread to the US when she posed in swimwear for Sports Illustrated. At 18, in 1984, she became the first woman from Central Europe to feature on the cover of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit and she appeared again in 1985. She was also the second woman to be featured on the cover in consecutive years. In 1992, she was named by Harper's Bazaar as one of its 10 most beautiful women and American Photo in its first issue declared her to be the model of the 1980s. She also appeared in magazines like Vogue, Elle and Glamour. In addition to appearing on the Calvin Klein runway, she has starred in advertisements for Chanel, Versace, Hermes, Christian Dior, Oscar de la Renta, Mickey Moto, Perry Ellis, Laura Biagiotti, Anne Klein, Ellen Tracy, Barney's New York, Anne Taylor, Guerlain, and Revlon. Still on the best supermodels of the 1970s and 80s, Yasmin Le Bon, regarded as one of the highest earning models of the 80s, was born in Oxford, England, to an Iranian father and English mother. Yasmin Le Bon's modeling career began in the early 1980s when she was spotted while working as a waitress by a model scout. She stands out in the profession with her distinct and exotic appearance. Yasmin became one of the most sought after models of her period and gained international recognition in the middle of the 1980s. Her name was associated with the first generation of supermodels, which included Cindy Crawford and Naomi Campbell. Yasmin had a significant modeling career in both print and runway. She walked the catwalks for leading designers and graced the covers of several esteemed fashion publications such as Vogue. As a model, she was renowned for her versatility and ability to effortlessly pull off a variety of looks and styles. Because of this, she became a favorite of designers and fashion photographers. She also starred in several well-known commercials for luxury goods, cosmetics, and fashion labels. Her notoriety in the field was aided by her commercial work. Yasmin's tenure in the modeling industry is what makes her unique. She defied the trend of models' careers, being relatively brief, by maintaining a successful career long into the 1900s and the 2000s. Yasmin has advocated for numerous charity causes and used her position to raise awareness about topics like breast cancer in addition to her modeling career. Following these iconic models, all prior to her iconic character in The Woman in Red and Weird Science, Kelly LeBrock was one of the most in-demand models of the 80s. 
Kelly LeBrock started her modeling career in her late teens. The fashion world was soon drawn to her stunning beauty and statuesque form. She soon made headlines when she appeared in a prominent Pantene shampoo commercial and memorably said, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. This was her big break. She shot to fame after this ad made her a well-known figure in the beauty and fashion industries. Kelly LeBrock was also on the cover of Vogue magazine in 1980. Despite having a shorter modeling career than her acting career, Kelly LeBrock's memorable part in The Woman in Red and her striking beauty made a lasting impression on the 1980s entertainment and fashion industries. She is still regarded as a legendary figure in pop culture. Finally on our list is one of the original Victoria's secret angels, Stephanie Seymour. Stephanie Seymour's modeling career began in the late 1980s, and she swiftly rose to prominence for her striking beauty and eclectic appearance. Stephanie Seymour's career started off in the late 1980s, when she was spotted at a local beauty pageant in New Jersey. She stood out in the modeling industry thanks to her distinctive looks and seductive demeanor. Stephanie became well known for being one of the first Victoria's Secret Angels. Her affiliation with the company, along with her inclusion in Victoria's secret fashion shows and catalogues, contributed to her rise to prominence as a supermodel. She was well known for her success in both commercial and high-end modeling. She participated in fashion designers' runway shows and walked the catwalks for many luxury brands. Among the most prominent fashion labels she walked the runways for were Chanel, Versace, and Christian Dior. Stephanie's fame in the fashion business was cemented when she appeared on the covers of multiple fashion magazines, such as Vogue, Elle, and Harper's Bazaar. In addition to modeling, she had major roles in several well-known music videos, such as the one for November Rain by Guns N' Roses. In the 2000s, she made the move from modeling to acting, making appearances in TV series and movies. Rebecca Schaefer was a young actress who rose to fame in the late 1980s with roles in the sitcom My Sister Sam and the film Scenes from the Class Struggle in Beverly Hills. However, her success also made her a target for a stalker, Robert John Bardo. Bardo was enraged by a bedroom scene in Schaefer's film and felt that she should be punished for becoming another Hollywood whore. He paid a PI firm to obtain Schaefer's address from the DMV and then shot her to death at her home when she answered the door. Schaefer was just 21 years old when she died. Michelle Thomas, known for her roles on The Cosby Show and Family Matters, died of stomach cancer in 1998 at the age of 30. She was diagnosed with the rare disease despite living a healthy lifestyle. Thomas underwent surgery to remove a tumor, but the cancer returned and she passed away two months later. She is survived by her family and friends, including her Cosby co-star and former boyfriend, Malcolm Jamal Warner. Brittany Murphy was a beloved actress and singer who died at the age of 32 in 2009. Her cause of death was pneumonia, with anemia and multiple drug intoxication contributing. Her husband, Simon Monjack, died five months later from the same causes. Some believe that black mold in their home contributed to their deaths, while others suspect foul play. However, there is no evidence to support either theory. Natasha Richardson, a talented actress from the Redgrave family, died in 2009 at the age of 45 after a skiing accident. She had a successful career on stage and screen, including a Tony Award for her role in Cabaret. She was married to fellow actor Liam Neeson, and they had two sons together. Richardson's death was a shock to the world, and she is still remembered for her talent and grace. Grace Kelly, the iconic Hollywood actress who became Princess of Monaco died in a car accident in 1982 at the age of 52. She was driving along a steep curvy road when she suffered a mild cerebral hemorrhage and lost control of her car, plunging down the mountainside. Her teenage daughter Stephanie survived with minor injuries, 
but Kelly sustained injuries to her brain and thorax and died the next day. If you are enjoying this video, hit the subscribe button in remembrance of these amazing people. Anna Nicole Smith, born on November 28, 1967, captured attention as a Playboy playmate before delving into acting. However, her notoriety stemmed from real-life events, notably her marriage to an elderly billionaire in 1994 and legal battles after his passing. She headlined her reality show, The Anna Nicole Show, from 2002 to 2004. Tragedy struck when her 20-year-old son Daniel died of an accidental overdose on September 10, 2006, just days after the birth of her daughter, Danilin. Amidst uncertainty over paternity, she faced a lawsuit. Sadly, Anna Nicole was found unresponsive in a Florida hotel a few months later. Despite rescue efforts, she succumbed at 39 due to a prescription medication overdose on February 8, 2007. Reynolds rose to fame in the 1950s in musicals such as Singing in the Rain and The Unsinkable Molly Brown and had a successful six-decade career as an entertainer and a businesswoman. Fisher followed in her mother's footsteps, beginning her acting career as a teen and becoming famous for her role as Princess Leia in the Star Wars films. She was also an acclaimed writer, often chronicling her struggles with substance abuse and bipolar disorder, as well as her relationship with her famous mother. On December 23, 2016, Fisher collapsed on a flight from London to L.A. and died at the age of 64 days later from cardiac arrest, with contributing factors such as sleep apnea. The next day, Reynolds suffered a stroke at her son's home, shortly after stating, I want to be with Carrie, and died later that day at the age of 84. While Reynolds was laid to rest, Fisher was cremated with part of her ashes placed alongside her mother and the rest placed in a giant novelty Prozac pill. Adrienne Shelley was an actress, writer and director who was found dead in her apartment in 2006. Police originally ruled her death a suicide, but her husband insisted that she would never have killed herself. Further investigation revealed that Shelley had been murdered by a construction worker who robbed and staged the scene to look like a suicide. Shelley's husband established the Adrian Shelley Foundation in her memory, which supports up-and-coming filmmakers. Dana Plato, who played Kimberly Drummond on the sitcom Different Strokes, died at the age of 34 from a drug overdose in 1999. Her son, Tyler Lambert, also struggled with addiction and died by suicide in 2010, just two days shy of the 11th anniversary of his mother's death. Plato's Different Strokes co-star Gary Coleman also died young, at the age of 42, in 2010. He suffered from a number of health problems and died after a fall in his home. Gilda Radner, a beloved comedian and actress, died of ovarian cancer in 1989 at the age of 42. She was best known for her work on Saturday Night Live, where she created iconic characters like Roseanne Rosiana, Dana, and Baba Wawa. Radner's death was a tragedy, but it also raised awareness of the importance of early detection and familial history of ovarian cancer. Natalie Wood was a beloved actress who died under mysterious circumstances in 1981. She was found drowned in the ocean after leaving her boat during a night out with her husband, Robert Wagner, and Christopher Walken. The official cause of death was accidental drowning, but there have been many theories about what really happened, including that Wood was murdered. Her death remains unsolved to this day. Inga Stevens, a Swedish-American actress, died by suicide at the age of 35 in 1970. She had a short but successful career in television and film, including the role of Katie Holstrom in the sitcom The Farmer's Daughter and the film Hang 'em High with Clint Eastwood. Stevens had a difficult life off-screen, with a history of mental health issues and a near-fatal accident while filming. Her death 
was ruled a suicide from acute barbiturate poisoning. It was later revealed that she had been married to African-American actor Ike Jones since 1961, but they had kept their marriage secret because they feared it would damage their careers.